I had to double check. If you know, you know. <gasps> I've been working on this diamond painting for four months, and in that time, you all have recommended so many great ideas, and in today's video, I wanted to give them a test. Let's start with the tools. A few of you have recommended I use a light board, and this isn't my first time using it, but let me tell you, this has been such a game changer when it comes to diamond painting for me. Next, we have the diamond painting pin itself. I've been using that little janky pin that comes in every diamond painting kit, and a lot of you guys told me that I needed to upgrade. So I picked up this pin from Amazon. It's got detachable heads, and the base is a lot thicker, hopefully making the pin more comfortable and easy to use. Now with all the prep out of the way, we can finally start diamond painting. So I started off with one placer because honestly I was scared. I was really afraid of ruining my diamond painting like I had before. If you haven't seen that first video, all of my drills were kind of crooked and that has been my fear ever since. So I wanted to start off really small and try not to mess anything up by using that one placer. Eventually I did move to a three placer. I know, I know, wild card. I'm really getting crazy over here but the three placer was definitely my comfort zone. I've been watching a few whipping chats. Uh, <laughs> if you don't know what a whipping chat is, that's okay. I barely know what it is either. But what I believe it stands for is work in progress and chat. I was looking at one of my old videos and YouTube put in the tag whip and chat and I was like, you, th you think I'm doing what in this video? <laughs> But anyways, anyways, that's besides the point. While I was watching those, I was taking notes, honey. I was doing research, looking it up. I was locked in. Okay. The most important thing I noticed was how efficient these creators were when doing their diamond paintings. A lot of times they'll use like a six placer, even for like a two placer spot or even a one placer spot. They kind of know exactly where to put the drill so it lines up with a square perfectly. Uh, that's not me. <laughs> not yet anyways, but that is definitely something I aspire to be able to do. Another thing that I noticed was how fast they were. It might look like I'm going fast, but let me tell you, I'm not. <laughs> or maybe it looks like I'm not going fast to you. And let me reassure you, I'm not. <laughs> But you know what? I'm totally fine with that. I really don't mind if, how long this takes. I just want to get it done. I'm enjoying this whole process, but honestly, I've never created an art piece this big before. So even completing this would be just the biggest thing that I've ever done. So I'm very excited. It's actually kind of wild to look back and remember that I wanted to finish this whole diamond painting in a week. You stupid. That's embarrassing. <laughs> it's literally been four months and I'm not even halfway done. I feel like that sentence in itself shows you how new I really was to diamond painting. <laughs> But I will say, this brings me to my next point. Now, this is my first large canvas diamond painting, so I really have pretty much zero experience when it comes to diamond painting. A few of you have given me some of your tips and tricks on how you complete your diamond paintings. A lot of you were saying I should do smaller sections, but I didn't know how because the original protective film that came on top of my diamond painting was not something that could be easily cut through. Don't get me wrong, it wasn't some type of indestructible paper, it just wasn't something that could be easily cut through with an exacto knife but the paper did come already pre-cut so i was using those extremely long sections as my dividers and the plan was to do a section a day i think the word delusional could be the only way to describe my plan another comment i get a lot on my channel is to try diamond art club and i am so excited to try them i have my cart wrecked Tea. The only thing I'm waiting for is for one poster in particular to come back in stock because I have a really, really fun idea planned for it and I don't want to ship my cart without it. So hang on tight because we're gonna do a lot of fun stuff with Diamond Art. But in the meantime, I really wanted to try their wax paper. I know there's been a lot of you who recommended this paper in particular to me because you guys saw how much I was struggling. So when I saw this at Hobby Lobby, I had to go back for it. I thought originally Originally, like oh I don't need it I'll just work without it but the next day I literally got a comment telling me to get this paper and I went back that same day and I got it and it's another 
game changer. I always had extra flaps flapping around. And with this, I don't have that problem. You know what? This actually makes me think of a question that I've had for months. A couple of months ago, someone commented and told me that I should be cutting off the white edges around the diamond painting. And I know it's something that needs to be done, but I just wasn't sure when I needed to do it. I'm sure this is something that changes for everybody, but in the comments below, can you please let me know when you cut off your white borders around your diamond painting? Is it before you start or is it after when you plan on hanging it? But honestly, all tips welcome because I need all the help I can get. Okay, so now I'm using smaller sections, using the correct tools, and I got the proper release paper. And I can definitely say this is a much more enjoyable experience. The pen is fitting in my hand very comfortably. I can see super well because of the light board. And everything seems to be moving much faster. I'd say I'm about 25% done with this diamond painting, the majority of which I completed in my diamond painting for 24 hours video, but a lot of those sections were completely black. So I was really, really excited to do some sections with lots of color. And honestly, a part of me knew that I would really regret that because the more colors, the more you have to change your colors. But it's been four months, and like I was saying, I cannot wait to finish this diamond painting so I can start another one. And I thought doing the colorful drills would really bring the picture together. I thought doing more colors would be more challenging, but it really isn't. It's really just about keeping an eye on the legend and making sure you're putting down the correct drills. Which, super fun fact, I actually wasn't for part of this. And here I was thinking I had it all figured out. I'm a professional now. I'm using the proper tools. I'm going fast. And about 20 of these drills were incorrectly placed. That's okay. That's the name of the game. Who's gonna notice? I, you wouldn't notice if I didn't tell you, right? right? I mean, so yeah, I was humbled pretty quickly. That's okay. Someone's gotta do it. I have been put in my place. Get it? It's a diamond painting joke? Okay, sorry. I'm done. I'm done. My set is over for today. No more terrible jokes. If I'm not mistaken, in this section is the very tip top of the head. No more jokes. And of course, the most exciting. <laughs> I used to checker my drills to keep them straight. I don't know if it's the pen or me having more experience, or maybe it's actually the drills keeping themselves taut together, but that's actually not an issue for me anymore. I don't think. Although I did come across a comment on someone else's channel that said they only use a one placer, that they've done many diamond paintings and they only used that one one placer. And that's how they keep their diamonds as straight as they do. And I thought that was really interesting. I wonder if their diamond paintings take a really long time, but they are extra precise. I'm a really big fan of the one placer because I can get overwhelmed really easy and doing one drill at a time is probably the most relaxing way for me to do diamond paintings. However, I cannot say the same thing about my wrist. Ow. It's just really hard to pass up the fact that I'm gonna get this diamond painting done three times as fast if I use the three placer as opposed to the one placer. And six times as fast if I were to use the six placer. It's all just too tempting. Either way, these drills are getting placed. And since I'm using much smaller sections, I don't know if I'm moving fast or what, but I think these smaller sections are really helping me. And if not, they're at least making me think that I'm moving faster, which is all that matters. I'm the only person who has to believe in my delusions. One of my favorite parts about diamond painting is when you're about 80 or 90% done with your section and the only parts you have left are just a few small squares because they all fit like so perfect. It is just one of the best feelings and I cannot wait to get that feeling once my diamond painting is almost done. I know I'm still getting used to even a three placer, but I am seriously waiting for someone to invent like a full like hundred row placer. You bet your ass I'm gonna try to use it. For the past couple of months, I have been on the hunt for new and interesting diamond painting tools so if you guys have come across any, let me know. I don't think there are too many to exist, but I could just be looking in the wrong places. I don't know about you, but I keep getting bamboozled by those TikTok videos. Well, the ones that make it look like the pen's automatically refilling itself, but it's not. It's just full of gems. And do not get me started on the ones that loop around, because let me tell you, I am there for like three minutes straight trying to figure out there's all to find out when I go through the comments, it's fake and I'm being bamboozled. 
So if you have any real and actual diamond painting tools that you'd like me to try, let me know down below in the comments and I will buy them and I'll make a video on them. So you don't end up like me, <laughs> disappointed and scammed. Okay, let me dry my eyes because we're moving on to the final section. My goal for this video was to finish the top half of this diamond painting, and it's a pretty large diamond painting, so we got a lot done, and I'm so happy about that. We even got a lot of really good sections done, a lot of very intricate sections. Honestly, I think I got done just as much, if not more, in this video than my diamond painting for 24 hours video, which says a lot, so I think we're moving. This last section is a much calmer section. It's pretty much all H's and B's. These sections are the best because you get to use a really large placer for all of the one color drills. However, like I said, three placer is still my comfort zone and I did use that for the majority of this last section as well. I can imagine how much faster this would have gone if I wouldn't have been able to use a huge multi placer throughout this whole section. But don't get me wrong, I did try and failed. It actually felt like it was taking me a lot longer to do the section because I had to keep picking up the stones and restarting and that honestly is a lot more frustrating than just using a three-placer. One of my biggest frustrations is using a multi-placer and not being able to see whether or not your drill is upside down or not. <laughs> that is my biggest pet peeve. I'll put down like a good six placer and two of them are upside down. So if you have any tips for that, please let me know in the comments below. As I'm filling out this last section, I just wanna say a enormous thank you to everyone who has commented and sent me encouraging words. I really appreciate you guys. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you guys in another video.